nobody greater than our God. He is our creator. He is the one who spoke worlds into existence just with three little words, let there be. And this same great God is the one who is looking over you, looking over me, looking over us. And that's why we gather together on tonight to study God's word that he has given to us so that we can live lives that are pleasing to him. So welcome, welcome, welcome. We are glad that you are here. The Lord is here. Our pastor is here, and so we are ready to do kingdom business. So we are going to ask um, Deacon Greg uh, to open us in prayer, and we are going to then hear from Pastor Dunnigan as he continues in this series that we have in the book of James on creating balance in your life. So hold on to your seat belts. I don't know what we're going to be talking about tonight, whether riches or rags, whether you're wearing lipstick or lip gloss. I don't know where he's coming from, but... <laughs> But we know we are going to get a word from heaven from our pastor. So we're going to ask uh, Deacon Greg to pray. And then the next voice you will hear will be our own Pastor Dunnigan. Um, unmute. <clears throat> Okay, not quite yet. These tech, sometimes these machines don't cooperate the way they ought to be. No, you're not, you're not getting it? Okay. Okay. Oh, there you go, there we go, there we go. Gracious Father, we come right now, dear Lord, and we just truly thank you, dear Lord, for this opportunity to hear your word from Pastor Dunnigan, dear Lord. We just thank you for all those who are assembled this evening, dear Lord, and looking for a great word and better understanding and drawing closer to you. So we just thank you for this time together, because truly there is nobody like you, dear Lord. You woke us up this morning. You started us on our right way, and we have had a great day. We've had a lovely day, and we pray that we will continue to be filled with the Holy Spirit and enjoy this evening as we come together and listen for a word that's coming from you in this Bible study. So we know that you have given our pastor everything that he needs to be able to share with us this evening. So we thank you, dear Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Thank you so much, Deacon Chambers, and good evening to everyone. I'm glad that you all are with us tonight. Uh, I am really excited to hear uh, from what from you in terms of what God has done with you as you've been speaking the word life every day over your life. I'm praying that you are speaking that word, that you are experiencing an, an enormous influx of the power of God as he moves in and through our daily journey. So that's what we were focused on. If there's anyone who would like to share, I'm gonna take a minute or so just to let you share if there was anything that perhaps happened unusual for you as you were speaking that word life throughout the week on last week, that was the call to action to speak the word life every single day, just that word, the word life itself. So is there anyone who'd like to share? You can uh, unmute. Yeah, you can unmute and jump right in and share. Well, this is Elder Cromwell. I have a friend who is um, having surgery. She had uh, uh, main arteries, two of them had collapsed and they lost one of the stents. And so she's just having a rough time. So the group, my other friends and all, I was telling them about Bible study and I was telling them that that was the word we were going to speak was life. Each and every one of us, including my friend Beverly, who is um, dealing with having to have heart surgery. So 
So we've been doing that. And it's just been a blessing to Bev and to the girls. And I said, it's just one word he asked us to speak, life. life. And when I say that, even I feel better right now, just saying life. Yes. It's yes. just like, woo. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes, yes, yes. Amen. Thank you so much, Elder Prummel. Okay. Uh, well, Pastor, this is Robin, Sister Robin. Hey, Sister and, Robin. Hey, Doc. And for me, it just changed the, my energy. Like, because I felt like I was going to the left. And that's when I said life. And it just changed my whole direction. Like my whole continence just changed. Like you can't be upset saying life. Amen. You can't. Amen. It's hard. It's hard. To, I mean, to really say that life and be upset. It, it was hard for me. That's I can say that. Amen. Thank you. Thank you so much for sharing. All right. Uh, <clears throat> okay. I don't want to cut anyone off. If there's anyone else that'd like to share, we, we'll take maybe one or two more, and then we'll move into our lesson for tonight. All right. Did I see Pastor Morgan? I thought I saw Pastor Morgan. Uh, maybe he logged in for a moment, but it was good to see that he was able to join us for tonight. All right, so tonight we're working through the book of James chapter four. And what I'll do tonight is uh, if you've ever purchased a product that you have to put together the instructions, the first thing that they will tell you to do is to, to open up the box and make sure all of the parts are there. So I'm gonna open up the box of James chapter four and then we're going to make sure all of the parts are there. In the book of James chapter four, these are the parts that we're going to have. Uh, James has conflict. He has desires. There's, of course, some asking. There's envy. There, he, he, he focuses on the devil. He talks about humility. Uh, it talks about a double-minded man, the intensity of grief. And then he asks a question, what is your life? He talks about a vapor. And uh, he talks about how sin is able to disrupt the power of God's life flowing in and through our life. So if I were going to tag tonight's lesson, the lesson is going to come from James chapter 4, verse 17. And he says, to him who knows to do good, but doesn't do it, to him it is evil. So uh, the, the tag of tonight's lesson is going to be act like you know. That's a, a, a familiar frame, phrase that was used uh, quite a while back. But remember, it is a sin to know what you ought to do and then not do it. It is a sin to know what you ought to do and then not do it. So that's the parts that's in James chapter four. Now we're gonna get into the participation component where we begin to uh, look at all of these components that are in uh, the book of James. And I believe to put it all together, I'm gonna to put it all together before we do the participation. And then we're gonna go ahead and put the participation into practice because I believe that knowing this question, and it was a question that came to my mind, this is a, a, a hypothesis, a hypothesis that I'm going to put forth. And I believe that if we know the answer to the question that I'm about to ask you, if we know the answer to this question, then we will master James chapter four. Okay. So let's look at James chapter four. What is causing the quarrels and fights among you? Don't they come from the evil desires at war within you? You want what you don't have, so you scheme and kill to get it. You are jealous of what others have, but you can't get it. So you fight and wage war to take it away from them. Yet you don't have what you want because you don't ask God for it. And even when you ask, you don't get it because your motives are all wrong. You want only what will give you pleasure. You adulterers, don't you realize that friendship with the world makes you an enemy of God? I say it again, 
If you want to be a friend of the world, you make yourself an enemy of God. What do you think the scriptures mean when they say that the spirit God has placed within us is filled with envy? But he gives us even more grace to stand against such evil desires as the scriptures say. God opposes the proud, but favors the humble. <clears throat> so humble yourselves before God. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. Come close to God and God will come close to you. Wash your hands, you sinners. Purify your hearts, for your loyalty is divided between God and the world. Let there be tears for what you have done. Let there be sorrow and grief, deep grief. Let there be sadness instead of laughter and gloom instead of joy. Humble yourselves before the Lord and he will lift you up in honor. <clears throat> Don't speak evil against each other, dear brothers and sisters. If you criticize and judge each other, then you are criticizing and judging God's law. But your job is to obey the law, not to judge whether it applies to you. God alone who gave the law is the judge. He alone has the power to save or to destroy. So what right do you have to judge your neighbor? Look here. You who say today or tomorrow we are going to a certain town and will stay there a year. We will do business there and make a profit. How do you know what your life will be like tomorrow? Your life is like the morning fog. It's here a little while, then it's gone. But you ought to say, but what you ought to say is, if the Lord wants us to, we will live and do this or that. Otherwise, you are boasting about your own plans and all such boasting is evil. Remember, it is a sin to know what you ought to do and then not do it. <clears throat> so tonight's uh, tag for the lesson is act like you know. I'm going to ask a question, and I believe, again, as I mentioned a little earlier, that this, this question, my hypothesis is if you answer this question, if you know the answer to this question, then it will help you to gain mastery of James chapter four. So are you ready for the question? All right, here we go. And I'm going to let a few of you answer. Those of you who feel like you want to answer, uh, you, you're, you'll get an opportunity to answer this question. Uh, so here's the question. What is the most valid way for you to exist in this world? What is the most valid way for you to exist in this world? What is the most valid way for you to exist in this world? So there is the question. I'm ready for you to wrestle with this question and provide some answers as they uh, come to your mind. I don't know about anybody else, but I'm stuck at the most valid way. Mm -hmm. Can you help me out, Doc? Okay. So um, a tree, an apple tree, the most valid way for the apple tree to exist in the world is to do what? Produce apples. Just be an apple tree. Be an apple. apple. What, what does an apple tree do? Grow apples. Grow apples. Grow apples. What's the most valid way for an orange tree to exist in the world? Bear fruit. Grow oranges. Grow oranges. Grow oranges, mm -hmm. yeah. Um, what is the most valid way for me to exist in this world? Service. What is the most valid way for you to exist in this world? Someone said service. Be a servant. Service, to be a servant. Okay. Uh, oh, God. Sylvia. I don't know whether you can hear me. Oh, yes. I, think, I can hear you now. Yes. Oh, okay. My most valid way for me to exist is to have a relationship with God 
and to stay in the word and to pray daily and get the fruits of the spirit deep down in my soul. Oh, okay. All right. I'm just going to make some notes because you all have been got deep already and we haven't even gotten into the lesson yet. Okay. Anyone else? Anyone else? Uh, Hope, did you have something you wanted to share? Um, to um, submit your life to God. Okay. Well, I had to look up the word valid as to see which way you was going with that. So it's a legally binding. So to be connected to God and no matter what I do, be connected to God. Okay. Connected to God. All right. Following God's commandments. Okay. Being obedient. Okay, to good. Love, to love one another is an action word. It's an okay. action. To keep breathing. Oh, good, 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 good. Okay, all right, anyone else? <laughs> These are excellent answers, anyone else? To share the gospel. Share the gospel, okay. All right, okay. So uh, so the, the relevant, the question is, what is the most valid way for me to exist in this world? Let me, I'm going to look up valid. Um, yeah, valid is well founded. It's a sound way. It's um, it's reasonable. It's rational. It is logical. Um, it is sustainable. Okay. So here is here are we've listed some of the parts that's inside of James chapter four. We we talked about conflict. We dealt with desire, asking, humility. You heard all of those things as we read through the book of James chapter four. And here is, I'm gonna share with you what I think is an appropriate answer that could potentially encapture all of what you've shared uh, or encapsulate all of what you've shared so far. Um, the, the most valid way for you to exist in the world. We're going to look at a few foundational scriptures, okay? So we're going to look at Ephesians chapter 1. I have my Bible here. If anyone wants to find Romans or Psalm 139 verses, uh, beginning at verse 14, you can do that, and I'll call on you to read when it's time. I also have Romans chapter 8, verse 28 and 29. So if someone can Grab those scriptures while I'm going to be reading from Ephesians chapter one. And here's what Ephesians chapter one has to say. <clears throat> I'm going to be beginning at verse three. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places in Christ, just as he chose us in him before the foundation of the world that we should be holy and without blame before him in love, having predestined us to adoption as sons by Jesus Christ to himself, according to the good pleasure of his will, to the praise of the glory of his grace by which he made us acceptable. I'm gonna read it again from the New Living Translation. All praise to God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly realms because we are united with Christ. Even before he made the world, God loved us and chose us in Christ to be holy and without fault in his eyes. God decided in advance to adopt us into his own family by bringing us to himself through Jesus Christ. This is what he wanted to do, and it gave him great pleasure. 
So we praise God for the glorious grace he has poured out on us who belong to his dear son. Did you all hear that? Okay. So the question again is, what is the most valid way for me to exist in the world? Just these are foundational scriptures to help us arrive at what I believe is going to be the answer that will help us with all of the parts that's in James chapter four. So the first thing we discover is that in Ephesians chapter one, it tells us that we were predestined. You all heard that word, predestined? Uh, that means that God knew us. And, and when, do, when were we predestined according to Ephesians chapter 1? Verse, before he made the world. Yeah, he, he predestined us when? Even before he made the world. Before he made the world. I want you to hear that. God entered into a relationship with us before he made the world. All right, you got that? Yes, sir. Okay, good. Who has Romans chapter eight? You have I Romans? have it, Pastor. I can read past now. Okay, thank you. Go ahead. Romans chapter 8, beginning at verse 28. And I am convinced that nothing can ever separate us from his love. Death can't, and life can't, and the angels can't, and the demons can't. Our fear for today, our worries about tomorrow, and even the power of hell can't keep God's love away. Whether we are high above the sky or in the deepest ocean, Nothing in all creation will ever be able to separate us from the love of God that is revealed in Jesus Christ, our Lord. Okay, so that particular scripture tells us that what can separate us from God's love? Nothing. Okay. All right. And when were we? When were? When did God enter into a relationship with us? Well. Before the foundation of the Before world. Before he made the world. So we, we know we were here at the beginning. And Romans chapter 8, verse, and I know I asked for 26, uh, 27 and 28, and we're going to come back to that, but that's 28 and 29, but that's not what she read, which is perfectly fine. She read 38. And but and so 38 says. Oh, 28. Oh. That, but that's okay. I sure did. That's Maybe perfect. it's because I have it underlined. That was that's probably why I read it. That's the spirit wanted that one read because that's going to bring a, a bracket around here. So God knows us before he creates the world mm -hmm. and then he entered into a relationship with us in the beginning and he will sustain that relationship until when? Until we go to be with him. And beyond that, because when we go to be with him. Have <laughs> eternity. Eternity. Because it says nothing shall ever separate Amen. us. Listen, it says nothing can separate us, even not even what? Death. Life, death. Lord, death. Amen. Amen. Your life. So we know we're in this connection with God that we can be we can be separated from that connection. I'm asking. When can when can we be uh we can't. We cannot be separated, Pastor. We cannot be separated from this. Amen. All right, now let's go back and read verse 28 and 29. And we know that God causes everything to work together for the good of those who love God and are called according to his purpose for them. For God knew his people in advance, and he chose them to become like his son, so that his son would be the firstborn with many brothers and sisters. All right. So the question is, what is the most valid way for me to exist in this world? 
So now we know that foundational scriptures tells us that God has entered into a relationship with us before the foundation of the world. And Romans chapter eight tells us that nothing will ever be able to separate us from that relationship that he started since before the foundation of the world, correct? I, who, has, who has Psalm 130, uh, 139? I have it, Pastor. Okay, can you begin reading at verse 14? I can, as soon as I get there, okay. Your workmanship is marvelous, how well I know it. You watched me as I was being formed in utter seclusion, and as I was woven together in the dark of the womb. You saw me before I was born. Every day of my life was recorded in your book. Every moment was laid out before a single day had passed. How That's precious. Okay. Wonderful. So we know that God entered into a relationship before the foundation of the world. Mm hmm we know that now we know that every single day of our lives have already been pre-recorded before any of them have ever been lived. Mm -hmm. And we know that nothing can separate us from the love of God. Amen. All right. So I'm going to go back because what James is dealing with, he's dealing with people who have not answered this question. And the question is, what is the most valid or the most appropriate way for me to exist in this world? And here's the answer. Are you ready for the answer? Ready. The answer is for you to be you. That's profound. Yes. If you are focused on being you, look at what James is saying. He says, what is causing the quarrels and fights among you? Don't they come from the evil desires at war within you? You want what you don't have. Uh. So you scheme and kill to mm. get it. You are jealous of what others have, but you can't get it. So you fight and wage war to take away from to take it away from them. When I am being fully me, I am I I have no evil desire in my heart to be what anything other than who God has made me to be. So God knew me before the foundation of the world. He didn't just know me, but God called me into existence because God wanted me to be me. He wanted you to be you. And when you are you, you are validly existing in the world in the way that God ordained your life to be. Paul had this conversation with some of the... Uh, with some of the believers, he says, how can the vessel say to the potter, why did you make me this way? Or why did you make me another way? It is in the potter's hands and will to produce the vessel in the way that the potter desires for the vessel to be created. God chose for each of you to be you. And when you exist as you without any concern for how someone else is existing in terms of what blessings they have or what gifts they have or what challenges they have or what possessions they have or the way that God has formed them, when you are not concerned about any of those things, then you are existing in the world in alignment with what God intended you to be. That's why every last one of you in on this, this is not by accident that you are here tonight. 
what God is getting across to us tonight is that you are the very best of God's creation. And all God wants from you is cooperation to continue to allow his spirit to fully flow in you, his grace to fully flow in you so that you can become all that God desires you to become. You are it. There is not another human being that's on this earth more valuable to God than you. Not one, not one, not pastor, whoever the pastor is, not the president, not, it doesn't matter. God made you to be you. And because God knew you before the foundation of the world, mm, this gets really deep. So just hang in here with me. Because God knew you from the foundation of the world, what God did was God deposited a part of his existence into you so that his existence would manifest itself through the beauty of you. Mm. We study the names of God. And what we discovered is that God is the, it's one God, but God has a million gazillion ways of manifesting himself and every last one of them. Jehovah Zitkanu is not better than Jehovah Jireh. Jehovah Jireh is not better than Jehovah El Roy. El Roy is not better than El Shaddad. That's all ways in which God is revealing himself to us. And depending on our position, our station in life, we're able to embrace the various identities and manifestation of God so that God is revealing himself to us in his fullness. That's why we experience so many aspects of life so we can get to know God more fully. So God chose to reveal himself to the world through the formation of you and of me. Hmm. That blows my mind, just saying that. <laughs> yeah, it is deep, Pastor. But I thank him so, so much because I don't know nobody else that's like me. Sylvia, Sister Sylvia, there's <laughs> another human being in the world like you. You are so unique. And I'm not just saying that. You are a very unique human being. And I could say the same would be true for every single person on this call tonight. And James, the reason that we have these quarrels and fights is we look at what others are. We look at what others have. We look at what others are able to do. And we compare ourselves to them rather than simply appreciating the way that God is manifesting himself through the others and God is equally manifesting himself through each one of us. It's a growing process. So we learn how to do that. What is causing the quarrels and fights among you? Don't they come from the evil desires at war within you? And this is, this is what, what he means by evil desires. On this call tonight, all of us, if we are living life to its fullest, all of us, have some unfulfilled desires. Is there anyone on the call that has every desire of their life fulfilled? I'm just asking you, if you are, no. let us know. Let us, is, is there anyone who has all of their desires fulfilled? Nope. Is there anyone on here who's still desiring something, but it hasn't yet manifested? Yes. 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 Let me, let me uh, see if I can scroll across the screen to see the other faces. If you all can give me a thumbs up or a nod or something to let me know that there are some desires that you have that God has has fulfilled, but there are some that you have not yet had them fulfilled. Is any? Yes. Yes. Okay. I see. Dick and Chambers, you're good. Yeah. Oh, yeah. OK. I, I see you, Sister McCain. Yeah. He's like, yeah, I got some. I got some. And, and this is the reason why he calls them evil desires is because no matter what you have, you will always want to have something else. Yes. 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 It doesn't matter what it is. Amen. You could, you know, OK, I, so I want to be in love. So, OK, I got it. I'm, I'm married. Now I'm in love. Mm -hmm. That's not enough. 
Mm-hmm. I want to have a family. Okay, now I got a family. Yeah. But not enough. I want to have a family and I want to have a house. I got a, a family. I got a wife. I got children. Right. But that's not enough. Not enough. I want to have a car so I can get around. Yeah. Okay. But it's not enough. Right, 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 right. No matter what you have, it's never ever Amen. going to be enough because we don't want more. We want it all. Yes, yes. We, we want it all. If if I if I could just hit the lottery, and yeah. if even I don't even play the lottery. You know, yeah. the lottery. I am content with what I have. I have I, Jesus and that's enough. I wish I, he yeah. answers all my prayers. Yeah. So I don't know. I don't know what else I could want for. The day he answered my prayer that my daughter won in the election. Yes. And I've been praying for her. So but, that's an answer prayer. Yeah, my other is, daughter that was having seizures a couple of years ago, she stopped having it when I started praying. Yes. So what else did I ask for? He yes. answers all my prayers, Pastor. He's yeah, but, a good, good God. So I don't want for nothing. But the point but is, since my husband died. He's really been doing more than <laughs> more than enough. Yes, but the point is, Sister Silver, you keep praying and asking God to do stuff. No, so, yes, yes. Assume that he that you, he would let your daughter win. So you had a desire. You came on Bible study tonight because you have a desire. Yes. To grow closer to God. It doesn't matter if God answers all of your prayers. You're still going to be praying for God to bless your children. Yeah. You're going to be praying for God to bless your pastor. You're going to be praying for God to bless your world. You're going to, we pray because we have a desire. Amen. We're always desiring something. Something, yes. And because we desire those things, that's not bad in and of itself. But it's when we desire those things that God has given to someone else that we want for ourselves. So he says, you want what you don't have. And we all have something that we want. And, you know, that's why we have faith. Faith is the substance of things. Hope. Faith is the substance of things. What? Hope for. When you're hoping for something, that means you don't have it. Right. As long as we have faith, we are constantly praying and asking God for the things that we don't have. Amen. Amen. But we always have these desires. And so you want what you don't have. So you scheme and kill to get it. Here's what James is saying. Once you recognize that the most valid way for you to exist in this world is to be you. That is to embrace all that God has designed and desire for you to become. Every single day of your life has already been lived. We're asking God for things that God has already worked out. If you think about what what the psalmist is saying, when you pray and ask God, I have some things that I'm praying and asking God for tonight. I'm praying and I'm asking God for these things. And and when I think about what I'm saying tonight, God has already lived my entire life. And not not only has my entire life already been lived, but when I get all the way around to the other end of the circle, nothing will have been able to separate me from God. Woo, that's a hallelujah moment. All the stuff that I'm not sure is gonna work Think it all to work out. It's already worked out. And in Hallelujah. The- that stuff. Nothing was able to separate me from God. Amen. Amen. You're right, not, Pastor. Not life, not death, not Nothing. sickness, not illness, not mm-hmm. Poverty. Mm-hmm. Nothing, 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 nothing shall be able <laughs> to ever separate me from God. Woo! I don't have what you have and I, something that I want and I don't ever get it. I still, at the end of all of that, I'm still going to be connected to God and I'm going yes. to be who God has ordained me to be. Hallelujah. So, so uh, James is trying to get us to understand when the most valid way, if I can think about this every single day, I will never, ever be jealous of another human being because God never intended for me to be Deacon Chambers. God never intended for me to be Sister McCarvin. God uh, never intended for me to be Dr. Delacon. As much as I admire all of you for the gifts that God has given to you, God never intended for me to be that. God intended for me to be who I am. 
And when I can embrace all of my energies around whom God has declared me to be, I can manifest the glory of God. I see a amen, hand up. Amen, amen, amen. Keep your hand up. Denise? You can unmute? No, that was from before. Oh, okay. 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 All right. So let me uh, let me let me give you this one. This, this now here's here's the piece that I I really wanted to leave us with, uh, because the, this now that we know that the devil wants to cause me to be either schizophrenic or to become bipolar. Mm. That's when I say when I say bipolar, uh, James says it. Um, yeah, he says it. Uh, let me see here. I have it. OK, In verse 11. Don't speak against each other, dear brothers and sisters. If you criticize and judge one another, you are criticizing and judging God's law. But your job is to obey the law, not to judge whether it applies to you. God alone who gave the law is the judge. He alone has the power to save or to destroy. So what right do you have to judge your neighbor? Look here, who say uh, today or tomorrow, we're going to a certain town and we'll say and stay there a year and do business here and there and make it. What is your life? What, I'm sorry, how do you know what your life will be like tomorrow? Your life is like the morning fog. It's here a little while, then it's gone. I, I have a question I want to ask you. And, and this is a, you can't ask me a question because I'm going to ask you a question. It's not a trick question. It's not designed to trick you up. I just want you to make a decision. Would you rather have boiling water or uh, ice water? Hmm. It depends on the deep. You just choose one. Ice water or boiling water? Boiling water. Boiling water? What else? Who else? Boiling water. Ice 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 water. Okay. Now, now what's ice, the ice water. What's, what's the difference between ice water and boiling water? I can drink ice water. I can't drink boiling water. <laughs> Aha, uh -huh. okay, you, so you can drink ice water, you can't drink I, boiling water. I can't boil, drink boiling water. Okay, all right. Now I need water. Okay, so what's the difference between boiling water and ice water? The temperature. temperature. Yeah, one's cool, one's hot. The boiling water will cool off. I told you it wasn't a trick question. This wasn't a trick question at all. Only thing I wanted you to get was this, that if it's ice water, or if it's cold water and somebody said it depends on the situation, I already knew that when I asked the question. <laughs> My, the reason that I the reason that I had make, had you do that choice is because I wanted you to see what's different between them. But then mm -hmm. I wanted to ask you what is uh, common between the boiling water. What's you know what what's common between boiling water and ice water? To both water. To both yeah. water. <laughs> 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 so here's what happens is when God puts his spirit in you, mm -hmm. the key thing is not rather is hot or cold, but mm -hmm. is to have the essence of God's presence in your life. Amen. Hallelujah. Are, are you following? Yeah. Can you repeat that, Pastor? Because you kind of froze up on my screen. I don't know anybody else. Yes, that's okay. So the, the key thing is one is hot and one is cold, but the essence is that it's still h2o all right it's h2o and it comes in a lot of different forms all right okay. water. it can be hot or it can be cold mm -hmm. we might choose one or have a preference for another but it is still h2o when god puts his spirit in us the essence of what's in us it doesn't matter if it's hot or if it's cold it is still god's spirit mm -hmm. god's spirit is in still god Single yeah. one of us. Some of us manifested as vapor. Some of us manifested as ice. Some of us manifested as steam. I know the, the, the folk on, on the call who said, well, I'm going to cook some collard greens and I can't cook collard greens with no ice water. I need okay. to have some warm water to cook my collard greens. <laughs> somebody's thinking about eating. Somebody else is thinking about drinking. It doesn't matter. It's still water. 
Yeah. <laughs> you have to have water. So God's spirit is in all of us and it manifests itself in us depending on what God is desiring to do with our lives. What the enemy wants us to do is to think that when the spirit manifests itself as boiling water, that's the, that's the epitome of who God is. Or when the spirit manifests itself as ice water, that's the epitome of what God is. God has manifested itself in every last one of us. And the epitome of who God is, is when we are able to express ourselves based off of who God has deemed us to be. Just be you. Just be you and thank God that God, out of all of the people he could have made, chose to make you for his glory. Good God from Zion. Listen, there's not another you in the world. So why in the world, if God made me to be me, would I ever want, ever want to be you? <laughs> I think you are marvelous. I think you are wonderful. But why do I need to be you when God made me to be me? OK, so don't ever devalue what God has done in putting his self and his spirit in you. The key to this is to humble ourselves. And I love what James says. So humble yourselves before God. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. Come close to God and God will come close to you. That's it. Just come Amen. Close to God and God will come close to you. Just come close to God and God will come close to you. It's really it's opening ourselves up to whom God said I am. See, God said you are Denise. God said you are Greg. God says you are Tukumbo. God says you are Mary. God says you are Debbie. God says you are Teresa. God says you are Gil. That's who God says you are. Now, who am I to tell God that I'm not? Amen. Anything? Amen. Amen. God, I think you did a much better job when you made somebody else. That's not humility at all. All right. That's, how are you going to tell God? Teach, Pastor. Teach tonight. <laughs> Lord, have mercy, Jesus. I'm going to tell God he should have made me Gail Walker. Yeah. No, I can't tell God what he going. He was. It, listen, this happened <laughs> before the foundation of the world. Yes. So God, God, yes. Before you manifest it. Now, here's a kicker. Here's a kicker. Uh, this, this, this really blows my mind when I think about the fact that God attached, he just mm -hmm. chose to attach mm -hmm. the essence of himself to a physical form. Mm -hmm. That's all we are. We are just a physical form. Mm -hmm. but the spirit of God that he attached to this physical form has always been around. Yes. Yeah. According to Psalm 139, mm -hmm. because God made me while I was being intricately woven in my mother's womb, yes. every day of my mm -hmm. life has already been pre-recorded, mm -hmm. which means if it's already been pre-recorded, the life that I'm living now has already been around. Mm. Oh, Lordy. I guess what I'm trying to get us to see is when we know this, there is, you know what, you know what jealousy is? Jealousy is really a fear of being replaced. That's what jealousy is. Jealousy is looking at you and thinking somehow that because you are or have what you have or are what you are, that what I am is inferior and it, re it, it, it causes me to feel less about who I am because I have conditioned myself or have been trained to condition what you possess or what you have to be more valuable than what God has given to me. So I'm jealous. 
I, I need not be jealous because what God has given to me, uh, I like the way Martin Luther King said, if you can't be a, a big tree on the top of the hill, just be a shrub, but be the best little shrub you can be. <laughs> you don't have to be a, a, a tree on the top of the hill. You just be a shrub. If God made you to be a blade of grass is here today and going tomorrow. Be the best blade of grass you can be. Just, man, it's, it just blows my mind. So he says, don't get caught up in the way of the world. You adulterers, don't you realize that friendship with the world makes you an enemy of God? What the world says is beautiful. What the world says is valuable. If you start embracing that stuff, it can have you, uh, it can have you double-minded in the way that you think about your life, that, that God, it, it doesn't give you a sense of stability. When I understand that God made me to be the very best expression of God's glory through his creation in me. When I understand that, that I'm my job here on this earth is to be the very best me that I can be. When I get that, then I'm never ever going to be jealous because of what you are, because God made you to do the same thing he made me to do. And that is to radiate his glory, his light, his power, his, his brilliance. Okay, so humble ourselves, resist the devil, and then realize that when God allows me to manifest who I am, there is something that aligns within me. My thoughts align up, my heart, my capacity to love aligns up. The words that I'm speaking are words of life. I'm able to speak life. They're not my words. These are God's words. I'm able to produce life. The power of it is in the tongue. I'm able to produce life because there is an alignment of God's spirit flowing through me. It's not what I eat that makes me pure or defiled, but it what comes out of my mouth. My mouth is able to speak the word of God because God is flowing with free reign in my mind, he's flowing with free reign in my words. He's flowing with free reign in my heart. He's flowing with free reign in the things that I do and my actions, my energy. All of that is just free reign, God flowing in me. And then James says, look here. He says, if the Lord wants us to, if the Lord wants us to, we will live and do this or that. Otherwise, you are boasting about your own plans and and that's evil. Remember, it is sin to know what you ought to do and then not do it. Act like you know that the most valid way for you to exist in the world is to be you and out of your being you god will empower you with his grace to do what he's called you to do don't try to do it until you are fully being it does not yet appear what we shall be but when god gets through with us we shall be like jesus and when he asked the disciples, who do men say that I am? Jesus knew who he was. He said, who do people say that I am? And they said, well, some say you just, some say, but Jesus wanted them to understand the most important question. But who do you say that I am? Thou art the Christ, the son of the living God. Our identity is so critical to not being concerned with pride, with jealousy with inner warring if we can understand that god made you to be you and nobody else can do that but you and when you do that god gets the glory your life is in alignment and listen james makes a contribution he does a contrast between what happens when we live a life that is uh, a life um that is contradictory, a life that is filled with sorrow 
and sadness and a life that is filled with joy. He contrasts these words. God wants you to experience a life that is bubbling over. The psalmist says, my heart bubbles over with the good thing. Why? Because the psalmist spent some time with God and the psalmist understood that it was God who made me. We are his people. Oh my God, we are the sheep of his pasture and the Lord loves us. I'm, I'm gonna leave it there because we could go on and on about the goodness of the Lord and his creation of us and how he desires for us to be who he calls us to be. So just to, if you don't, don't hear anything else, you heard the word tonight. Now the challenge is to act like you know. If something comes up in your brain that tells you, I wish I could do, you shut that down. That's, that's the devil. Don't wish you could do nothing that God didn't assign you to do. Just do what he assigned you to do and do that well. And you'll be able to give God the glory for everything that you do because you realize that it is his spirit that's moving and working and living in and through you. All right. Um, any questions? Because I know we covered a lot of territory tonight, but that's putting it all together. Act like you know. Oh, man. Praise the Lord. Thank you so much, Pastor. That was wow. a word. Oh, my goodness. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, do we have comments, questions, um, insights that you want to share? Um, you can raise your hand or you can wave your hand. Uh, you get, uh, okay, Sister Betty, unmute. Okay, you're not unmuted. Uh, try it again. There you go. Yeah, yeah okay, fine. I, um, I thoroughly enjoyed the, the second half uh, of of of, uh, of your presentation. Um, you know what happened to the first half. After the first four minutes, my computer and my TV blacked out. I don't know what happened. I thought it might have been all over the city, but evidently not. Um, and they gradually came back on. So my question is: Is there any way I can get? Uh, I'll send you the video. I'll send you the recording. Oh, excellent, excellent, excellent. Okay, that's what I wanted to know. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Amen, amen. We have um, some comments in the chat box. Um, that was an absolutely wonderful message tonight, Pastor. Awesome lesson. Um, Humility positions us for holy presence. Oh my goodness. Okay. And then, um, amen, pastor. Living a valid life is me being the best me I can be because God made me the way I am before the foundation of the world. Three exclamation points. Hallelujah. <laughs> amen. Amen. I This message got through tonight. Hallelujah. Um, let's see, it's more, that is more than what you need being connected to God. Okay. Powerful message, just be you. Mm -hmm. All right. Oh, and we have some visitors uh, tonight. Um, let's see, Victoria and Idris. Um, were invited and they showed up. So welcome uh, to our, our Bible study. We're just so delighted that uh, you were here and able to join us on tonight. Amen. All Amen. right. Okay. All right. So if we don't have any more um, comments or questions, uh, we just want to thank everybody for your participation, for your involvement, and most of all, for taking the time out of your schedule to join us tonight. And so we are going to close out in prayer. We are delighted to also have Rise Community Church from Ohio uh, with us on tonight as well. And so we are going to ask uh, Ruby Pruitt. 
of um, Rise Community Church to close us out in prayer, please. Sure, Dr. D Donovan, that was very delicious. I would say it was a delicious <laughs> meal tonight. Okay. Great, fantastic. So Father God, we just give you all the honor, the glory and the praise. And we just thank you, Father God, for this wonderful word that you have given us today. I'm truly full, Father God, from that meat that you have fed us today. So Father God, I just ask that you help us all to be the best me that we can be. So we can always glorify you and give you the praise and the glory and the honor that you truly deserve. Father, we love you. We adore you. And we just thank you for what you're going to continue to do for us through you in our, in our lives, Father God. We give you the praise, the glory, and the honor. In Jesus' name, we pray and say amen. 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 Also, I want to give a shout out to uh, Dr. Delacon, who's with us, Pastor of Rise. God bless you, sir. Thank you so much for being with us and having the congregation to participate in the Bible study tonight. And Amen. To all also, thank you, Pastor. Awesome tonight. Thank you, Dr. Devon. Yes. Amen. You. Thank you so much. Thank you. All that, was, right. that was mountain top. Unmute. Hallelujah. Thank you. you can unmute and say your um, good evenings as we close out. Thank you, Dr. Denner, for moderating. Thank you. Good night. 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 Good night, everyone. Good night, everyone. Good night. Good night. Mm -hmm. Blessings on you. Mm -hmm.